J drone here. What's going on, guys? That's what it is. We're gonna put the jet on the H7000. I'm gonna show you how to do it. And I haven't done that. I mean, I've bound it before, but I haven't flown off of it before. So I'm curious as to whether it's going to record distance and altitude. So we're going to hold power and hold start at the same time. It says system initializing. It says bind to plane. At that point, we need to power on our quadcopter. It binds pretty quickly. Um, we then also have, or had, um, I've done this where I've had the video feed. Um, All right, guys, if you could see an FPV, you can see me. This is coming from the jet, um, and it definitely works. So uh, it, it's hit or miss, I guess. I guess sometimes it's going to connect automatically, and other times it's not. But uh, as you can see, this, this time, time I did not did. get the video feed. I wonder why that is. Let's see here. We are going to close out our app. Close that out. I've gotten a video feed before. Close out. Then maybe uh, close that out. Let's start over. Let's go ahead and shut this off. As you can see, it's beeping and whatnot. It knows it's been disconnected. And this battery's a little bit tough. Kind of got to unstrap it and then pull it from the base. And then it'll come out. We'll go ahead and stick that back in there. And I just prep it. I put it right over the top of the plug, but not so it's touching the terminals. We'll go ahead and strap this again. And what we will do here is we will go ahead and uh, click power and start. System initializing, bind the plane, and that's what we're going to do. We have our wire prepped, it's right over top of it, binds the plane, and we're then going to uh, open up our Sunbird app. going to click on video. We don't have it. That's odd. Um, I was able to get it before, uh, but generally we would fly this in FPV, not so much on the screen here. But again, I... I did start this up once before and I had it, um, the FPV setup, but basically it's showing distance zero, altitude zero. I want to see if that changes. So what we have here is we need to go down and out. And we need to control our throttle. Because at center, that's where it's at center, it's actually losing altitude. So actually, you don't really have to control it horribly because at center it's going to drop. So it's not going to go all over the place. Um, distance is showing 99 meters, which is not correct. <laughs> um, so the distance is not correct. Um, we are getting no altitude. Let's go ahead and rise up in altitude. We are getting no altitude on it either. So it's not judging any of that. And that's basically what I wanted to check here. Um, I don't know that we can throw this in acro on this controller. This is me just kind of just testing stuff. The gimbals feel nice on it. They feel good. This, uh, the... This controller, they could have did a lot with this controller. They really could have. We're just going to go ahead and scream downfield here and bring it back. Um, they could have made this controller, the the FPV 5.8 gigahertz receiver on it, um, universal or scannable. I should say scannable because it is kind of universal if you could set your own channels. And again, why this wasn't picked up on... Uh, on the app is beyond me because I did try this in-house and it did pick up on the app. Like I had the FPV in the upper corner. This time it did not. I think uh, I think the receiver is constantly changing channels and it's really not pairing up channels. Um, or sometimes it's pairing up channels because I would think on the 501s, you're always going to get it, hopefully. Um, hopefully you would always get it. But maybe that's also on initial startup. Maybe I had to shut the screen down. Here, we'll find out. Let's find out. Um, because I want to uh, try and diagnose this uh, controller here. And again, we are, uh, we're off the stick and it's coming down. So this, this is very flyable on this down and out. We'll shut it down. Um, what I'm going to do, we're going to turn off everything. And it's not doing it. Um, in the past, it has done it. But uh, alright guys, we don't need that on. We're just going to go ahead and fly this. Give this a little fly. The jet is definitely a nice drone. Um, it's a brushless drone. Has a 5.8 gigahertz camera. And again, the FPV screen, I don't know. The FPV screen on this is novelty when it comes to something like this because something like this, we really would not be looking at a screen. Um, we'd basically be in goggles. That'd be the way to fly this drone. Uh, for your 501s that you're sending on missions, which this was made for, is actually made for the X4 Pro, um, the gimbal carrier. For those drones, um, 
the it's a, it, the the controller is really made for waypoint missions where you're just going to send it. You, you're you're going to click on a map. You're going to send it out a mile, mile and a half where uh, range would normally not reach. You're going to send it on a mission, and then it's going to come back. What I'm doing, the manufacturer probably never intended for this drone. This drone probably wasn't even out when this transmitter or trans receiver. I think it's trans receiver, uh, transceiver um, was made. But because it's uh, it's picking up the typical Hubson protocol, um, you can definitely you can you could bind any Hubson besides the Hornet, uh, which is weird because the T8SGs will bind to the will bind the Hornet. It recognizes it as uh, the normal protocol and. can't tell if that's beeping or if this is beeping. I think it's that. I don't know why that beeper is so low though. Battery wasn't fully charged on us. I kind of did a quick charge. I have a uh, battery charger that does quick charges. Really not great for the batteries, but I kind of wanted to get out here and see what we first saw, that it's not calculating distance and it's not calculating altitude, um, which by radio frequency, I don't understand why it, why it can't do that because it's a radio frequency that's bound from the controller to the drone. Um, but it's definitely not doing it. As soon as you take off, it's registering the drone at 99 meters. And then secondly, I wanted to show you that you can pick up your 5.8 gigahertz camera through the transceiver here, um, but unfortunately I was unable to show you that. And then we'll go down. That is what's beeping. Um, that beeper sounds a little bit low. But alright guys, I'm Jay Drone. If you haven't subscribed, smash the subscribe button.